President of the United States there just announcing Steve Dettelbach as his nominee to head the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, the ATF. Dettelbach, a former U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Ohio. The president announcing the nomination there at the White House while addressing new gun regulations as well, hoping to crack down on ghost guns. Take a listen. These guns are weapons of choice for many criminals. We're going to do everything we can to deprive them of that choice. And when we find them, put them in jail for a long, long time. For more on this, let's bring in ABC News political deputy political director Avery Harper, also former FBI agent Brad Garrett, ABC News chief justice correspondent Pierre Thomas, and our own Molly Nagel, who is at the event there at the White House. Molly, maybe we start with you. Uh, quite a day from changes in gun regulations. I guess I sh maybe I should hold off till the music calms down. Can you hear me okay, Molly? I can hear you, Kira. Okay, good. All right, roll with us here. So just get, set the scene for us there at the White House. Very powerful testimony from a young woman, a survivor of a school shooting where two of her friends died. The parents were there as the president talks about addressing uh, ghost guns and, gu and, ghosts and gun violence, rather, while also nominating uh, his, uh, his top pick for the ATF. Yeah, this is the second event that we've seen here of the Biden administration in the Rose Garden talking about gun control. We saw this about a year ago when Biden first introduced uh, the idea of this rule that uh, they introduced the final rule today. Uh, but this is a, a significant issue for President Biden, who has focused on this quite a bit throughout his career, but has struggled to get uh, meaningful legislation passed during his presidency. Today, we saw him announcing this victory on this law that was uh, took nearly a year to get through this rule, excuse me, uh, and introducing his second ATF pick uh, to head that bureau after they had to pull their first one. So this is a day that's very important to the Biden administration, but also comes coupled with some struggles that they faced on the issue of gun control uh, during the administration. And forgive me, Molly, I should have waited till the band piped it down a little bit. So, Pierre, let me take it to you and just talk about what do you make of the president's rules here to address ghost guns and gun violence here in the U.S.? Is it going to be enough? Well, one of the things we should point out is that, look, there are thousands upon thousands of Americans being shot uh, and killed annually. And there are millions upon millions of guns out there. But make no mistake, ghost guns are an emerging problem. I'm just looking at some data the Justice Department just put out today. And they point out that in, uh, from 2016 to 2021, ATF received about 45,000 reports of suspected ghost guns. Now, here's the thing that's stunning. In 2016, uh, these were guns that you know, came into ATF uh, from crime scenes and other uh, methods. In 2016, there were only 1,700 of these kinds of weapons uh, being sent to ATF or information about them being sent to ATF for analysis. Last year, there was 19,000 344. So you see a extraordinary jump in the uh, use of these kind of weapons showing up in crime scenes. And it's clearly something that law enforcement is very animated about because as you heard the president say, and that uh, very impressive young lady say, that these guns are out there and they're being used often by young people. And the president, uh, even during his remarks, addressed uh, how accessible these are, like you just mentioned, these, and how easy ghost guns are, uh, how easy it is to put these ghost guns actually together. Let's play a little bit of that. It's not hard to put together. A little drill, hand drill at home. It doesn't take very long. Anyone can order it the mail. Anyone. Folks, a felon, a terrorist, a domestic abuser can go from a gun kit to a gun in as little as 30 minutes. Buyers aren't required to pass background checks because guns have no serial numbers, these guns. When they show up at a crime scene, they can't be traced. Brad, just to follow up on what Pierre said, how is it that they have become more accessible, more uh, more easy to, to get, more easy to put together? So think about it this way. The components to the gun, the only one that's legally an issue is the receiver. Uh, and so what happens is the gun 
these folks that sell guns in parts, that they send you with the kit, the gun kit, basically a drill bit that exactly fits where you need to drill on the receiver to then turn it into what ATF would define as a part that is actually controlled by the federal government. You then put it together, as the president pointed out many times under 30 minutes, and keep in mind, you can get AR-15s, you can get AK-47s, you can get almost anything you want as a ghost gun. And so as a result, it, it's, it's, a, it's a business model, if you will. If you buy perhaps a, a 9 millimeter or 45 weapon that would cost $700, $800, depending on the brand, you could put exactly the same gun together for maybe two or $300. So it's cost, it avoids any regulation, and it literally allows anybody that's got the ability to order and get on the internet to have a firearm. And when you talk about what those firearms have done to our schools, to our children, uh, the young student, Mia uh, Treva, that spoke about this shooting in Santa Clarita, California, about an hour outside of Los Angeles, losing two friends. Those parents were there at the White House lawn. Just listening to what she had to say, uh, it definitely moved you. Let's take a listen. It was a gunshot, followed by six more. One of the bullets hit me in the stomach. Somehow, I was able to get up and run away, but Dominic couldn't. I was airlifted to the hospital and spent hours in surgery having a bullet removed from my abdomen that was millimeters away from my major artery. Then my parents told me the terrible truth. Dominic had died, and so had another classmate, Gracie Ann Muehlberger, a 15-year-old girl with an infectious laugh. Avery, you hear testimony like that, and as a parent, you just think, oh my gosh, I want to do everything possible to keep guns out of the hands uh, of, of, of kids like, like this, the, the young man who, who took the life of, of those children. But this country is very much split on gun rights. Right. I, listen, when you listen to shooting victims, folks like Mia Tretta and, and other uh, shooting victims, uh, they are not necessarily concerned about that split. They are concerned about preventing uh, there from being any more victims of gun violence. And I think that you could argue that the Biden administration uh, feels the same way. This is uh, coming at a time when there was an uptick uh, in crime across this country. Uh, it also comes at a time where, if you look at the uh, Biden uh, approval numbers when it relates to his handling of crime, those numbers are dismal. If you look at the latest ABC Ipsos poll, it's at, at 38 uh, percent. And so there is work uh, on the part of the Biden administration to be done uh, to convince Americans that they are moving in the right direction. We heard uh, Biden call for uh, Congress to act uh, in, in several areas. He said, uh, you know, he called for the elimination of the manufacturer's uh, immunity uh, when it comes to shootings like this. He called for universal background checks for uh, abandoned, unserialized firearms and high capacity uh, magazines. But uh, the problem for the administration remains the fact that they have this 50 50 Senate. And there just is not the appetite uh, for uh, those sorts of reforms. Which brings us to the nomination now of Steve Dettelbach to head the ATF. Molly, what do we know about him? Well, this is Biden's second nominee, uh, nominee to head that bureau. Uh, he, he was replacing David Chippen, who had to be pulled after there just wasn't support for him in that 50-50 Senate, as Avery was talking about. Now, the White House is describing him as an uncontroversial nominee. They are saying, uh, it, you know, that this is somebody who should be able to pass the Senate, given that he was already unanimously passed the Senate when he was nominated as a U.S. attorney. Uh, Jen Psaki today in the briefing just before this event here kind of threw the gauntlet down at Republicans. Republicans basically saying if you're concerned about crime, if you want to make rising crime rates an issue, uh, you should be therefore in favor of nominating, uh, of confirming this nominee uh, to his new position to help get a handle on crime and get a handle on gun violence in particular. Molly, Avery, Brad, Pierre, thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.